In this example problem, we're going to calculate the nominal flexure strength, flexural strength of the blow section with CFRP strands. Um, you can see we have six CFRP strands. The area of our carbon fiber reinforced polymer strands is a little different than our um, area of our conventional steel strands. Um, so this is given by the manufacturer. So for here, for these six tenth diameter strands, we'll have an area of 0.18 square inches. Um, the behavior of CFRP strands is much different than our um, conventional steel strands. Um, so we have a linear elastic response all the way up until failure. Um, so you can see it's a little bit different of uh, a little bit lower modulus than our steel strands, um, but a little bit higher strength than our steel strands. So we're at 350 KSI or so for our ultimate strength. Um, but you can see that these strands uh, have much less ductility um, than our conventional steel strands. So we need to use a different procedure for finding our flexural strength, um, which is why we're going to use strain compatibility to find our strength. Uh, some values that we'll need for our, our um, analysis, uh, we need our ultimate tensile strain, um, which is just our ultimate strength divided by our modulus. Uh, and then we have two limits uh, in place for CFRP strands. So the jacking stress limit is uh, limited to 0.7 times the ultimate strength, so uh, 245 for us. And the service stress limit for these CFRP strands is 0.65 times our ultimate strength, um, which for us will be 227.5. Uh, we're going to assume that the strands are stressed to the maximum jacking stress. Um, so that's where we're at for uh, 245 for our, our jacking stress in the strands. Uh, we're going to assume pre-stress losses in this example. Um, so we're assuming 0.05 times our jacking stress for our elastic shortening and 0.18 times our uh, jacking stress for our total losses. Um, we can find losses the same way that we do for conventional steel strands um, for elastic shortening, shrinkage, and uh, creep, but we need to use a, a different expression for uh, relaxation. Um, we can then also find our, our concrete stiffness uh, using our conventional equation. Um, to be 4,415 KSI, and our strand eccentricity is just the distance to the centroid of all of our strands minus our YT. So we have an 8-inch strand eccentricity. Uh, the first thing that we need to do is calculate our effective strain and our decompression strain. And to do this, we need to find uh, first our effective pre-stress. Um, so this is our stress in our in our CFRP strands after all of our pre-stress losses. Um, so for us, we had a jacking stress of 245 KSI minus our total losses of 44.1 KSI, uh, which will give us uh, an effective pre-stress of 200.9 KSI. Our effective strain is just this stress divided by the stiffness of our strands. So 200.9 divided by 22,500 KSI, uh, which will give us a strain of 0 0.00893. Uh, we can then find our effective pre-stress force by taking the stress in our strands after losses, 200.9, uh, times the area of our strands, 1.08, uh, which will give us a force of 217.0 kips. And our decompression strain, then uh, we can use this equation here. So the, the strain to get back to zero, or this, yeah, the strain to get back to zero strain, uh, we have 217. Our effective pre stress force divided by 288. Uh, times 4,415 KSI plus 217 times our eccentricity, 8 inches squared divided by our gross area, or sorry, our gross moment of inertia, 13,824. Uh, times our modulus, 4,415 KSI. And we'll get a decompression strain of 
1, 2 times 10 to the negative fourth. Uh, this decompression strain is normally pretty small, and um, it can typically be uh, neglected. Um, but we're going to include it um, in this analysis. Uh, our next step is to iterate to solve for the pre-stressing strain at, at ultimate strength. Um, so we need to either assume that the CFRP strands rupture or the concrete crushes first. Um, so we're going to make one assumption and then check our assumption and then go back and modify it if needed. Um, in this equation, or in this example, we're going to assume that our concrete crushes first. Um, so our concrete is going to crush before our CFRP strands rupture. Uh, so we're going to assume that our top fiber strain is 0 0.003, assuming that our, our concrete's crushing. And uh, we're going to guess an initial um, strand stress. Uh, so we're going to, you know, run through uh, some calculations and then we'll check to see if this is a good guess. Um, so this strand stress, I, I used a, a solver to find find it, so this will be a, a good guess for us. Um, but if, you know, at, at the end you find that your strand stress that you calculate is different than this initial guess, you would need to, to modify and uh, iterate. Our next step is to um, calculate our rectangular stress block coefficients. If we have a top fiber strain of 0 0.003, we're going to assume that we have our uh, conventional um, stress block coefficients. So um, 0.85 for our alpha 1, and we can find our beta 1 just using our, our ACI expression. Um, so our beta 1 is just uh, 0.85 minus 0 0.05 times F prime C in KSI minus 4. Uh, which will give us a value of 0.75 and we need to check this against our 0.65 minimum it's greater than it so we have a beta 1 equal to 0.75 um, we can then use uh, equilibrium and our stress and force diagram um, to calculate our compression block depth um, so our only tension force here is our uh, pre-stressing strands so APS FPS and our only compression force is from our compression block. Um, so a depth of A, a width of B, and a stress of 0.85 F prime C applied over the um, width of that compression block. Uh, so then we'll have A equal to APS, which is 1.08. times FPS, which we assumed as 322.7, divided by 0.85 times F prime C, 6 KSI, times B, 12 inches. Uh, and we'll get a compression block depth here then of 5.69 inches. We can then find our, our neutral axis depth by taking our A 5.69 divided by our beta 1.75, uh, which will give us a C of 7.59 inches. So that gives us our compression block depth and our neutral axis depth. We next need to uh, find the strain in our pre-stressing and use that strain to find the stress in our pre-stressing and see if that stress is equal to the uh, uh, stress that we assumed at the beginning. Um, we'll do this using our strain diagram and uh, assuming that we have a, a linear uh, strain distribution across the depth of our section. Um, so we can find first the strain in our pre-stressing caused by the applied stress. So our epsilon pf is going to be equal to 0 0.003 times 20 inches our d minus c 7.59 divided by 7.59 and this will be equal to 0 0.0049 um, so then our total strain in our pre-stressing is this stress 
or sorry, strain from our stress, 0 0.0049, uh, plus our effective stress from our, our pre-stressing, 0 0.00893, and then plus our decompression strain, uh, 5.12 times 10 to the negative fourth. And we'll get our, our, pre, our strain and our pre-stressing then to be 0 0.0143. So uh, the stress strain curve for our um, CFRP strands is linear elastic up until failure. So our stress and our pre-stressing is just equal to the stiffness of our CFRP strands, 22,500, times our total strain in our pre-stressing, 0.143, uh, which will get a stress here of 3. 22.7 KSI. So we can see that this stress that we found is equal to our initial guess, so you know we're okay. If uh, this value um, is different from our initial guess, then we would need to go back and iterate again. Um, al alternatively, you can use a, a solver um, to you know solve for the, or to it, take care of the iteration. We next need to calculate our nominal moment capacity uh, based on our stress and force distribution. Um, so we see that we only have our tension force and we're going to sum our moments about the centroid of our compression block. Um, so our force, APS, FPS times our lever arm, DP minus A over two, uh, will give us our moment. So uh, for us, we have our moment is equal to 1.08 the area of our uh, pre-stressing times 322.7, uh, the stress in our pre-stressing times 20 minus A 5.69 divided by 2, uh, which will give us a nominal moment here of 5,978 kip inches. Uh, for CFRP, our resistance factors is uh, 0.75, so we'll take 0.75 times 5,978, uh, which will give us a value here of 5,380 kip inches. Um, so this is our factored no nominal moment capacity of uh, our CFRP section.